Good evening. Can I give you a very warm welcome to St Matthew's Carol Service this year. Christmas is such a special time of year for all of us and at St Matt's uh, the carol service is always a highlight. I know it would be so easy to be disappointed that we aren't able to meet together in church and hear the story of our Saviour's birth retold in readings and in song. But I still hope you're excited to be with us tonight. I know that I am. I'm really looking forward to all that we're going to share together this evening, even though it's in such a different way to what we're used to. Um, we've got some lovely special things for you this evening. We're going to be hearing those familiar readings that tell the story of our Saviour's birth. We're going to be singing carols together, albeit in our own homes, that are familiar and so full of meaning and truth. And we're going to have beautiful choir items uh, prepared for us tonight. Uh, I think you're going to enjoy everything we do. And this year we have a particular treat. We're going to have a very unique nativity performed by some of our younger and perhaps not quite so young members of St Matthew's. So just at the beginning of our service, um, I want to encourage you to take a moment to stop. Why not set aside this hour to be a holy moment, a, a time to leave behind the busyness um, and all the pressure that we're under in our daily lives, to come aside for a moment and to focus again on all the events that lead up to the birth uh, of our Saviour. Um, and as we do that, I really pray that you might rediscover the hope that God offers us in the birth of his son Jesus. So thank you for joining with us this evening. I really hope you enjoy your time with us tonight.
time to light our advent candle. We light this fourth advent candle to remind us of our calling to reflect the light of Jesus is in his dark world. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others that they may see in your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Happy Christmas everyone!
The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 9. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honour Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. For to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The birth of Jesus foretold, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered, what kind of greeting may this be? But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with, with, God, with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. 
How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be able to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. The angel left her. Verse 56. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, holy in his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him for generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. He has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. 
He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Isn't that lovely? I hope you're enjoying the carol service this evening. One of my pet hates about church is the perception that we're always asking for money. Uh, and if you worship with us in the flesh, you'll know that we've always tried not to put pressure on people to give. Um, but there's one occasion in the year when I'm prepared to be bold uh, in asking people to give, and that's at Christmas. Because at Christmas I'm not asking you to support St Matt's, but to join with us in supporting and caring for some of the most vulnerable people in the world. This year our Christmas offerings are going to an organisation we've partnered with for many years, Tear Fund, uh, and their Christmas appeal. They work with some of the poorest and most vulnerable people in the world. So I'd like to share with you their Christmas appeal video. Inendi nala ya, nimezaga don't feel. Ndi mavura njala. Ndi mazana ndi mavura njala, ndi mari ni gani njima ngaji mari ringe la madi. Tinja wa gani dwaji wudi. Tufuri tinja wa uli be miri ngo mpeperi mo. Ola kandi miri ngo, ndi mangu jeli ngo tiri gali ma, mada jama ngo gogorola. Ma karana, ndi neo, nda bam. Zewe buti sifa siku vya lima nguja ka mozi. Ndi mavazo kwele. 
Mimba mama ndi vorenga nda kani jana tima kujenga jamela. Ndi mama vugu vorenga. Sima na jaruli la, agwe ndi njala, mage ndi no sowejwa. Zuguwe ndi foya jani, ndi foya ndi jamadi. Mato jamadi zovola jagu jijiji. Eka wuri, mato jamadi zovola zogu jijiji. Tosi kazo kala vampantende. Tosi kazo agwe ndi jano rena ana kazo mali na nanga abeza bwan jagu jamage soya jagu jumsoa. Nzio njani ni ma. I may be able to find out about the combat. I'm a one and years later than the Evangel. The mom of them from Boya from Boya Mukugi. Malawi is uh, affected by hunger because of changing weather. There are times when uh, we have excessive rainfall. In uh, a very short period, we have uh, too much rainfall. It causes flooding, washing away people's crops. Sometimes we have also a dry spell where rains just stop. Therefore the crops, they lack water to be sustained in terms of crop development. So these two situations, they are affecting uh, people's farming, leading to hunger. A liar is in desperate situation. The man she lies on for food and income is failing again and again. To help communities that are affected by changing weather, tier funds and our partner are teaching them better ways of farming so that uh, they can farm smarter. We help communities to replant trees. We are also teaching them business skills, beekeeping, livestock production, particularly on the goat and chicken rearing. This is very, very, very important because uh, it provides families with alternative so that uh, they are able to sell livestock or honey and then have money which they use it for when they have hunger. Good evening again. Um, 
This year our church school appointed a new head teacher, Mrs Sonia Phillips. And normally we would have wanted to invite her to come along on a Sunday to be able to introduce her to you and you to her um, so she can get to know us better. And we really value the link we have with our church school. Of course none of that's been possible this year. So I'm really delighted that Sonia has agreed to read one of our lessons tonight and also just to take the opportunity to say a brief word about herself. Um, so a very warm welcome to you Sonia. Uh, thank you for making the time to do this um, and joining with us, albeit digitally. We really appreciate it. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sonia Phillips. I'm the head teacher at St Matthew's Primary School. And unfortunately, due to the current circumstances, I haven't been able to get to meet you and come to the church. So hello from me. Um, I've been made feel really welcome at St Matthew's. And I really look forward to becoming part of the school community in the wider um, neighbourhood. So if you see me out and about, wave and say hello. The birth, the birth of Jesus, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there were no guest rooms available for them. Shepherds hear the good news. Luke 2, 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. 
and all who heard it were amazed as the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which was just as they had been told. Another highlight at Christmas will be our children sharing their nativity with us. Um, this year it's been filmed and um, normally on TV at this point they some, say something along the lines of filmed within the government's guidelines. Well actually it really has been and I think it's all the more special for it. Um, our children will be telling the Christmas story in their own words so perhaps expect a little bit of poetic license. They'll also be acting it out with the help of a few significant adult characters. I really hope you enjoy it. Uh, do prepare yourself for an excess of cuteness and perhaps just a little bit of holy wonder. Enjoy. The story of how baby Jesus was born. Once upon a time, there is a girl who's called Mary. I, I think, I think Mary is with, with wearing a green t-shirt with stripes on. What colour stripes? Like red stripes. Mary is wearing a blue dress. She was just thinking, she was just giving half of her pie to a little mouse. Oh, it looked strange, the mouse. Mary is sleeping. Mary was asleep in bed. Suddenly! Suddenly! The angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and said, God is going to give you a baby. You must travel to um, Bethlehem to have him. Where did you come from? I came from the heaven above. God has sent me down to tell you that you are going to have a baby called Jesus. The new baby boy is going to come from your tummy. Mary felt shocked. I can't have a baby. I'm only a teenager and I'm not married yet. You will have a baby and you will name him Jesus. Mary is engaged to, to Joseph. Joseph works in a workshop and he and he um, and he makes wood and chops. Chopping yeah. wood looks like this. Yeah. And it looks like that. Mary had to go and tell Joseph. Mary went to see Joseph and told him that God is going to give her a baby called G Jesus. Joseph said to Mary, uh, How is this going to happen? I'm not the father. Are you really going to have a baby? Mary replied, because it's going to give me a baby. Joseph did not believe her. An angel came to Joseph and said it was true. Mary is going to have a baby. Mary's tummy got bigger and bigger and bigger. Mary and Joseph had to go to Bethlehem. I wonder how they got there. They went on a donkey. The donkey made a noise and it went ee-aw. Mary felt a bit bumpy. Mary felt nervous, but at the same time excited. Because it's a bit like going, it's going to be a bit like a holiday, really, isn't it? Yes. Except when there's no seaside. Yes. Or ice cream. 
Nice. Mary felt tired. Mary felt sick because sometimes like when your belly is big and like there's a baby bumping around in your tummy sometimes you feel a little bit sick because you're on like the back of a donkey kind of like a camel and it just jolts up and down sometimes. They tried to go to find a place to stay. They had to knock on each door asking if they had any room but they didn't have any room. But a kind man said, There's no room in my inn. You can stay in my barn. He showed, showed them, them the way. So they went into the barn and they had the baby in there among the cows. There were lots of animals in the stable. There were cow sheep and dog monkeys. <laughs> and there was lots of hay, comfy hay, and um, probably um, some calories and <laughs> stuff. So. And lots of noises in, in the stable too. Papa! Clack, clack! Clack, 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 clack! Meh, meh! Mary looked at her baby lovingly. You're the best baby in the whole world. You're the loveliest thing ever, baby Jesus. Um, I love you. Shepherds were looking at for sheep. The shepherds were in a, um, a grass field um, with their sheep. They didn't want to see any wolves. All of a sudden, the angels appeared in the sky. Holy to God, there was a baby who was born in a stable. And you shepherds should go and see it. Are you flying? The first shepherd said, what are you doing here? Where did you come from? And then say, nice, good news, now a baby Jesus has been born and he's at Bethlehem. We need to go to Bethlehem right now. We need to hurry up. The shepherds follow to Bethlehem. It's a long way to Bethlehem. Follow that star. It's a long way to Bethlehem. And we don't know where we are. I love you, baby Jesus. You are kind, holy to Jesus. The, the wise men looked up, up in the sky and saw... And saw... A ton. They saw a big shiny star. Cool twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. the brightest in the sky I let's have a look on our chart to see what it means this means a king is born let's follow it they traveled on the we have on a boat um I think they got there by camel so Hector they might have a big bump and big lump on them and they might sit on the camel and ride it there. They brought presents. A toy locacon and a toy train and a toy um, dragon. They would bring him a pet lamb. If I was a wise man, I would have brought nappies. If I was a wise man, I would have brought jogging buttons and a toy monkey. And I bring a teddy bear. No, I think they brought presents. I bring gold. Spray. Myrrh. I meant frankincense. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, 
Mm-hmm. It's not Franklin Sense. Franklin Sense. Franklin. <laughs> Our king is born. Jesus came a stranger, born in humble manger. Would that I had known him by his side I'd kneel, tell him how I feel. Glad he came down to save us. Thank you, God, for saving us. Jesus was God's present, present to us. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! And to all a good night. That's a wrap. you've enjoyed this year's carol service. It's been very different to what we're used to but I hope you'll agree with me that it's still been very beautiful and it's still been special. It has been a strange year though hasn't it? It's been an incredibly difficult year I think for everyone. None of us um, I suspect have ever lived through anything quite like it and now um, inevitably we're facing a very different Christmas. Uh, I, and I suspect we're approaching it with mixed emotions. Um, it does seem to me that Christmas began um, very early. Um, and I think that was quite a natural response to the darkness um, that we were living through. Um, am I alone in finding that the second lockdown in autumn and now finding ourselves in, in tier three seems so much harder than that first lockdown in the spring 
I kind of then it was like it was full of new life with 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 new shoots and with hopes of something better. Um, but this year, in the darkness of autumn, in the approach of winter, uh, it, it's felt much more difficult for me. Um, it may you may be different, but that's how it's felt to me. Um, it, and it's felt, I guess, for that reason, like we really need Christmas. Um, and in a way, in a way that we've not done before. But now as the reality of Christmas approaches, it's more and more obvious that that Christmas is going to be very different. Most of us will not celebrate Christmas uh, in anything like a normal way this year, no matter what the government decides for us. For some, uh, it's going to bring home some really unpleasant realities. The absence of a loved one, the financial strictures that we, that many of us face, loss of work or income, um, just the, the, the commonplace inability to be with those that we love the most that faces so many this year. Um, uh, throughout this year we faced huge challenges and it seems that they've brought the best and the worst out of us. We've seen amazing heroism and self-sacrifice, uh, especially from carers and NHS workers. Uh, and we've seen expressions of gratitude for that, um, clapping and celebrating those carers. But we've also seen, I guess, the darker, more disappointing side of humanity. Um, the hoarding of loo rolls and pasta, rushing to crowded beaches without a thought for anybody else. Um, I suspect many of us have had our own internal battles too. That fear of Covid, either concern for our own health or the health of a loved one, wanting to be responsible to do the right thing, but desperately needing social di contact. Um, many of us have been more anxious. Um, sometimes, we've, um, sometimes we've been finding ourselves angry and not even understanding why kind of biting and snapping at the, at the least thing, um, for no apparent reason. And it does feel at times like there's a struggle to hang on in there. Um, you know, is there an end in sight we can feel? But thankfully it now does feel like there might be an end in sight. Um, vaccines are beginning to be rolled out um, and with it the, the possibility of some sort of return to normality in the new year. Although what normality looks like, that fit seems increasingly uncertain too, with redundancies, business closures and, and so much more. Uh, the, the, you know, the reality that we knew will have changed. So in the middle of this, we need hope. We still need hope. Yes, there's the hope that a vaccine will bring uh, something closer to normality. Um, now, I'm not a great medical expert and probably my medical friends will be queuing up to tell me I've got kind of this explanation wrong. Um, but my understanding is a vaccine works by giving us a tiny bit of the illness so that our immune systems are switched on to repel the real thing should we come into contact with it. We get a little bit of COVID to save us from actually catching the real thing. And I, for one, will be only too pleased to receive a vaccine. Um, at Christmas, I think we're offered a much greater hope than that. Not a medical solution to a human disease, but a spiritual solution to so much of what begets the human condition, with or without Covid. Um, God doesn't give us a vaccine against sin. Um, he gives us himself. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He doesn't give us a little bit of help or even an immunity. He gives us his son, Jesus, which means God saves. God literally comes in human form to save us himself. He gives us everything. And at Christmas, Jesus was and is the ultimate gift. Throughout his life, he just continued to give. He poured himself out for others, for the broken and for the hurting. 
even on the cross, he continued to give. He gave his life. He takes all of our brokenness, our shame, and he gives us all of his goodness. He doesn't give us a little bit like a vaccine. He gives us all that he is and all that he, who he is. Completely, unreservably. He holds nothing back. At Christmas we can celebrate the birth of Jesus and it can be a respite. Um, it can be um, a stepping away from the darkness and the frustrations of the year we've gone through. Um, and then we can go back to normal afterwards. Um, or we can welcome him into our lives forever. Uh, we, can, we can welcome him in to change our lives forever. We can accept the gift of life that he offers to everyone who puts their trust in him. And I guess I hope you won't mind me asking you a personal question this Christmas. Have you ever actually done that for yourself? Um, there's a famous verse, it's one of my favourite verses in the whole of the scriptures, because it paints the most wonderful picture uh, of what Jesus offers us, really. It comes in the last book of the Bible, in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Uh, and um, in it, one of Jesus' disciples, the Apostle John, one of the people closest to him, has a vision of Jesus. He doesn't see Jesus as the baby in the manger, in his vulnerability. He doesn't see him as the Jesus that he knew beside the Lake of Galilee. Uh, he sees Jesus uh, after he is, after his death and his resurrection, exalted in all his glory, the glory of the Son of God uh, in its entirety. Um, the, the Jesus that we will meet one day in eternity. Um, and he sees Jesus um, standing at the door uh, of someone's life. Um, and Jesus speaks out and says, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will sup with them. Uh, Holman Hunt, one of the pre-Raphaelite painters, painted a beautiful image of this, which is in, um, which is in St Paul's Cathedral. Uh, he saw Jesus holding up a lantern in the darkness, kind of reminding everyone that this Jesus is the light of the world, the one that brings light into darkness. And he sees the door, he imagines it, I guess, because we don't get this kind of clue in scripture itself. He sees the door as if it's got brambles all over it. Brambles at ivy, as if this door has never been opened. Um, and it's like Jesus is saying, open that door and I'll come in. Um, you may never have done that, but the invitation is here this Christmas. And then the language that's used is fascinating. Come in and sup with me. You know, what's the thing we long for most at Christmas? To be able to sit around our Christmas table with those that we love the most, those that are closest to us. I mean, ironically, actually, it's this year when the doors of our houses at Christmas are going to feel more like they've been, they're, sh they, they're shut than ever before. Relatively few people are going to come with them. But Jesus says, open this door, open the door of your life, and I'll come in and I'll sup with you. That relationship we long for with those that are closest to us, Jesus is offering us that sort of relationship, a relationship in which we share our lives with him, and he shares his life with us. Um, so at this Christmas, when our physical doors are staying closed, um, I want to invite you to welcome him in spiritually, into the door of your life. There's no limitation on our hearts and our minds as there is on our lives at the moment. We can open that door and we can welcome Jesus in. Not just for Christmas, but for every day of our lives. And he wants to come in to bring us a life in all of its fullness, not life that's limited by COVID or circumstance, he wants to shine his light into the darkness that sometimes pervades our lives. He wants to bring hope when all around us it feels like there's such hopelessness. So today I just really want to encourage you and invite you to open that door, to welcome him in, to make this Christmas a Christmas like no other because it's when a journey with Jesus begins. Thank you so much for joining with us. Thank you so much for listening to me. 
Uh, and I pray you might know the wonder um, of this Saviour who was born in a manger, but the wonder that he can bring into your life every day. Amen.
Well, that brings us to the end of our carol service this year. Uh, I just really want to thank you for joining with us. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Uh, I hope that you've just experienced that sense of wonder that we all do when we hear these events um, kind of portrayed so beautifully. Um, and before we go, I would just like to give a few thank yous. Um, so many people have taken part uh, this year, as they do every year. People have read lessons, people have sang, people have played instruments. Um, so many different people. We've had actors this year as well in our nativity. We've had people that have made um, costumes for them too. Just thank you to everybody that's played a part in this service. Uh, but there are just a few people I want to single out and express my gratitude to. Susie, um, the singing was absolutely beautiful. Um, just thank you for all the work you've done with the choir uh, and then editing the, that into such beautiful pieces. Um, and Lois, um, thank you for the amazing nativity. Being director, camera operator, editor, uh, it was really, really wonderful. And actually, none of this would have happened without Brian somehow running the tech in such a seamless way. So a very big thank you for Brian too. Um, well, this is the end of our carol service, but it's not the end of our Christmas services. Um, our next service will be our Christingle on Christmas Eve. Um, that's going to be online at four o'clock. Uh, you need to collect together all the things at home that you need to make a Christingle. There's a crib sheet that you can download if you need help with that. Um, and um, do just hold back. I know you'll want to make it all up straight away, but wait until the service and we can all make it up together. Uh, it would be lovely if you can join us for that little bit of Christmassy magic that comes with Christingle. You'll be so welcome. Uh, and then our final Christmas service is on Christmas Day. Uh, we'll be live online um, at 10 o'clock. Live actually from the vicarage this year uh, and from lots of other homes around the parish. Uh, we really want to celebrate um, the birth of our Saviour together uh, and we hope you can join us for what promises to be a really, really special service. Uh, whether you can join with us again um, um, or not, we would just love to wish you and your family and your loved ones a happy um, and a safe um, Christmas. Um, we're going to close our service now uh, with a traditional organ voluntary played by Jean. Thank you, Jean. Mm -hmm.